I'm Robert Reed. I'm an associate professor in the School of Medicine. I am a pulmonologist uh, who works in the division of uh, pulmonary and critical care medicine. My funding agency, the Flight Attendants Medical Research Institute, is very interested in the effects of secondhand smoke because the flight attendants themselves were exposed to a tremendous amount of secondhand smoke uh, back when you could actually fly and smoke at the same time on airplanes. And it occurred to me that the Amish may be uh, an ideal population in which to study the effects of secondhand smoke for a variety of reasons. One of those reasons is because none of the women smoke. And so you can really get to the center of, of what is true secondhand smoke uh, exposure that is smoke inhaled from the air of those who are smoking around you. And so any effect of smoke is truly secondhand in nature. Uh, the Amish don't smoke a lot as well, and, and that actually makes them an interesting uh, group to, to look at. Only about a third of the men smoke, and their preferred tobacco is uh, pipe and cigar tobacco rather than cigarette tobacco. And those forms of smoking actually produce more secondhand smoke than do cigarettes. And that uh, makes for a fairly novel and interesting group to, to look at and see if the, there really are health effects. This is a small amount of secondhand smoke exposure and if we see uh, effects that look detrimental to one's health, it suggests that this is very toxic stuff. And indeed, that's what we found. In women, there was a pretty robust and significant signal for reduction in good cholesterol uh, in association with exposure to secondhand smoke. And in men, exposure to secondhand smoke didn't seem to really reduce uh, that particle very much or at all. It strikes me as, as important that the, the small, small degree of secondhand smoke that is likely to truly be affecting the Amish members of the families in, uh, in this community are actually manifesting with detectable and significant measurable uh, differences in their cardiometabolic risk for uh, heart disease, for, uh, for a lot of other things, diabetes as well. And um, the fact that we're seeing that suggests to me that there is no lower limit to the risk that we see with secondhand smoke exposure.